I was living in a canal boat um, about 35, 40 years ago and didn't want to use a chemical toilet. Uh, so came up with a very simple bucket and chuck it system uh, where you poo into a bucket, add a bit of sawdust, and then when that's about three quarters full, put it in a compost heap. And the compost heaps I used were planted and surrounded by very densely by willow. So in effect, I was emptying my compost toilet into a little woodland, a mini woodland. So that was the basis of understanding how trees absorb toilet wastes and, and turn it into tree biomass, which is a, a very good thing. Many years later, about eight years later, I moved into uh, an off-grid cottage in Herefordshire and I just took that same system uh, instead of having a bucket and chuck it system, I built a, a platform above the compost heap and that became the tree bog. So a tree bog is a, a simple to build regenerative sanitation or in NGO parlance, a wash system. And it provides compost facilities where all what most people view as a problem, waste, feces, urine, wash water, menstrual blood, are not considered to be a problem. They're considered to be a resource to be used, biomass to be composted into soil and not a problem to be disposed of. So it's a tree bog. It's a platform mounted toilet. It's a platform above a compost heap surrounded by trees. That is a tree bog in essence. Only compostable material should be put into the tree bog so no plastic or metal, because that would end up in your soil that the tree bog makes. A tree bog is simple to build using local materials and people have built tree bogs uh, from sawn timber, uh, oak beams or old pallets. So whatever's about can be used to create the structure. Remember the structure is very simple, it's a toilet above a compost heap. So we've built tree bogs with trained carpenters or with untrained people under supervision. And in fact, later on, I'm going to show a series of slides of some totally untrained people, some of which had never held a hammer before, building a tree bog in about four days. Something to remember. A tree bog is not a toilet. There are no, there is no pit or hole needing to be dug underneath the tree bog. It is a soil surface composting process. This has several advantages. Firstly, if you have pit latrines, you get the liquids and the solids sitting in a pit. In a pit. That goes anaerobic, i.e. the oxygen is used up. You get incomplete decomposition of the nitrogen compounds in the urine, ammonia is produced and that smells. So if you mix the liquids and the solids in a pit, you always get a smell. As there is no pit under a tree bog, they do not smell. The solids remain on the soil surface and the liquids soak into the soil underneath the tree bog where there are the tree roots. And the tree roots are covered with many, many microbes, fungi, bacteria, archaea, and that is where the processing of the nutrients, the plant nutrients occurs in the root zone of the trees underneath the tree bog. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Andrew Jeeves and the wonderful photo, um, drawings he made for Bill Mollison's book, Permaculture Designer's Manual, but uh, Andrew, these lovely drawings, infographics for the tree bog. Um, hopefully you can see that now. You can see the structure, a simple platform mounted toilet with rainwater collection going to hand washing. Uh, and these are the steps going up and the trees growing around the tree bog and the roots underneath the tree bog. So in essence, this is how a tree bog works. The other way of doing it without steps is to, if you have a slope, 
is you can have a platform which is on the slope and you're using the slope to raise the toilet seat above the ground. So this is if you have a slope, you can do it this way and not have steps. Uh, this is very good for a disabled access too because no steps. This was a tree bog which was created in South Wales uh, for a, an art space, a rural art space where they all sometimes have small concerts, festivals of about 300 people. And this double cubicle tree bog built in three or four days using larch, which was felled and milled on the site. So this was the site the day we started. And there was an oak tree, a young oak tree directly in front of where the tree bog was going to go. This is the, the timber coming in. Some holes dug to little foundations. So this is learning to use a hammer. And that is the structure, the basic structure of the tree bog. Then we surround it with two layers of chicken wire and we stuff that with straw. This acts as a visual screen and also the straw absorbs any excess urine that might occur. So there we go, that's the straw being put into it. Other people have used um, woven grass, uh, slatted wood. So there are many different ways to create the visual screen as long as it's open and it allows air to circulate through to the compost heap, that's fine. So that's what it looks like. And then we put the cladding on. Stairs to the tree platform. And this was a couple of months later with the willow growing around, tree now in leaf. Obviously, the oak tree's got lots of roots underneath, so that's already there. So a tree bog can also be placed next to existing trees. Uh, and our latest tree bog at the cottage was put next door to a mulberry tree. And once that was in place next to the mulberry tree, the mulberry tree fruited incredibly well. So heavy feeders like fruit trees are also good to plant around the tree bog. And that's the in internal structure, the seating platform of the tree bog at Quaid Hills. So locally available materials can be used. Native locally available trees are used. Uh, in the UK, we originally used mainly basket tree willows simply because they were so easy. They go from cuttings, uh, unrooted cuttings, but now we also put fruit and nut trees, soft fruit bushes, vines and climbers, whatever you like. It can be the start of a small home garden, very productive. This is the Kamiak tree bogs, which were created in September and finished in October 2019. Everybody took part. It was a good learning process. Uh, there's uh, painting the tree bog. And there are the little trees that were planted, some only six inches tall on the day, mulched with straw. So their roots are somewhat protected from the intense, intense sun of Kamiak. I think 40 degrees is not unusual during the summer. So it's good to water the trees in for the first three or four months to help them establish their root zones. Uh, and once they have those established, the roots go underneath the tree bog and absorb the, the water that is put in every day, the wash water, the urine and the compost. So here was the tree bog four days after the initial structure was being built. To go, ready for use. Now this was about three months later with the trees look better. And uh, six months that you can see the trees are, are really doing very well. And uh, we'll talk with Elka and Sahad later as to how the tree bogs were integrated into the daily life of the people at Kamiak. So this is one year after completion. 
some of the trees are doing really well. I don't quite know what this one is in front here. I know there are some citrus trees, uh, some papaya. We did plant a, a, a banana, but it was a, a bit of a sad banana before we even transplanted it and it never took. But I think uh, bananas would do really well around the tree bog because they're very heavy feeders. Uh, this is one year after completion and uh, 18 months i think it was 16 months the papaya actually started to fruit and this is 80 it has taken 18 months after the completion we've got two papaya on that now i think they normally take about three years to fruit in senegal and this was two years old the trees almost like a small forest around the tree bog uh, and that's the tree bog posse people who organized and made the tree bog, although Sahad is not there. So a tree bog is an example of applied permaculture design. And it shows how placing the components, the trees, the tree bog base together in specific beneficial locations can turn the problem of toilet wastes. And I put that in inverted commas because there is no such thing as waste in nature. These wastes become a source of regenerative resource creating tree growing sanitation system. These are some of the principles of permaculture, care of the earth, care of people and redistribution of the surplus yield. These are the basic tenets of permaculture and care of the earth. Well, the tree bog prevents pollution of land and water. So cares for the earth that way. It also creates soil, which is very beneficial to the earth. It creates resources, doesn't degrade the environment like many modern mechanical systems do. And it provides trees in and around the dwelling place. Care of people. A tree bog gives regenerative sanitation. People do not have to resort to open defecation, which is basically a waste of resources or to energy intensive machine based systems like pit latrines that have to have so it provides the toilet facilities reducing ill health due to contamination of land and water and with the redistribution of the surplus yield the yield from a tree bog the fruits the nuts the timber the firewood all available to those within the community or family group that has built that is using or managing the tree bog some other principles of permaculture, the principle of energy inputs, the principle of energy cycling, and the principle of energy efficiency. With energy inputs, the tree bog uses no non-renewable energy once it's been built. Energy cycling, the tree bog cycles the, the waste, the feces, the urine, the menstrual blood, the wastewater, the wash water, into soil, into plants and trees. So there's your cycling all within the tree bog base. Uh, the principle of energy efficiency, as I said, the tree bog is solar powered by photosynthesis of the planted trees and the sun is the major source of energy on the planet. So the tree bog requires no other energy inputs in the form of machinery pumps for its operation. It's a structure that other than being physically damaged or eaten by woodworm and termites will be in place for many, many years. So it's a good use of resources. Functional design principles, the principle of stability, the principle of multifunctionality, and the principle of relative location. Stability, a tree bog is planted with many trees, shrubs, and other plants. And if one of these should fail through whatever reason, it's not right for the place, it's shaded out, there are others planted right next door to it, which can take its place and still do the processing. Multifunctionality. Plants and trees have several functions within the tree bog to photosynthesize and to pass the oxygen from photosynthesis and the simple sugars, which are also produced through photosynthesis into the root zone supporting the microbial population there, stabilizing the soil and enhancing the creation of more new soil. So the tree bog 
is a multifunctional system. It's not just a disposal system. It's a purification and production system. And then the principle of relative location. The trees are placed adjacent to the compost pile to absorb the urine and wash water. The compost pile is placed directly underneath the platform in an aerobic space. So the soil microbiology, especially the mycorrhiza, the white rock fungi can easily access and grow into it. And the tree bog is located within the compound close to where the users live to make ease of use. For resource use, a tree bog uses biological resources powered by photosynthesis and planted species. It's have the transformational metabolism of the microbial population within the soil. And the principle of diversity, the planting of the tree bog allows for a wide range of plants and trees to flourish. By growing well, they're able to absorb the plant nutrients found in the compost pile. Edge effects. There are many edge effects with the tree bog, but the biggest one is the surface area of all the trees and the plants around it. And the principle of intensification, another permaculture design principle. The very dense planting of trees around the tree bog allow a much bigger root zone to develop than would normally be found. The other thing that the tree bog does is it, it fulfills at least three of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Goal one was the Clean Water and Sanitation Goal. A tree bog provides simple and effective sanitation. The Reduced Poverty Goal. The tree bog produces biomass resources from the so-called wastes. And the Zero Hunger Goal. By creating soil, the tree bog is the basis of a productive home garden. In a refugee or IDP camp situation, a tree bog could provide low cost, self build regenerative sanitation. It's able to convert the few guaranteed resources that the people living in the camps have, and that's dirty water, feces, urine, and menstrual blood, turning these supposed wastes into useful, beneficial resources. The resources can include fruit trees, nut trees, animal fodder trees, medicinal trees, shade trees that provide fencing materials, firewood, coppice, nectar and pollen for bees and other pollinators, all for building structures or dwellings and even more tree bogs. And as well as all this, living soil is created and stabilized. Hi, I'm Elke, and um, Saad, maybe you also want to introduce yourself. Hi, hi everybody. My name is Saad. I come from West Africa, from Senegal, and I'm the founder of the village of Kambia. So we are uh, Junit, the association Junit, and um, we would like to start to give you a short introduction of the village where the two first tree rocks um, were yeah, built. And first of all, I have to say, I'm a big fan of, the, uh, of these tree rocks. Um, I think I'm the biggest fan, really. Uh, they are really, really awesome. Uh, founder of uh, Junit and Kamiak village is Saad Sa, as you just um, saw. And uh, he's, uh, he's living in Senegal, right now he's in France. Um, but he's also a music musician and um, yeah, he, he started this um, project of Kamiak Village. And I would like to show you where Kamiak Village is that you have like an idea. So it's in West Africa, it's in Senegal. Uh, it's 120 kilometers away from Dakar, the capital city. And as you can see in the picture, it is very, very dry. And uh, in this area, there is no infrastructure. Um, there is no um, no cars, and it's very, very hot. Like we are, it, it can go to in the dry season. It can go to 50 degrees. Um, so the climate is pretty intense. In the raining season, it's very humid and um, yeah, also very hot. Um, so Sahad Sa, he brought the land few, four years ago and there is no electricity and no uh, running water 
um, a lot of young people, they leave this um, area because there are no job possibilities. There, is, um, yeah, there are no perspectives. Um, so people go into the um, capital city Dakar or they go to Europe and they risk their lives um, on, the, on the sea. So Saad Sa, he said, okay, I, I don't want to wait for the government. I want to build a village in the middle of nowhere and create jobs there, create perspectives for the young generation. So that's how uh, Kamyak Village started. Um, so with a group of enthusiastic young people, um, Saad Sa, he started actually um, to dig the, two, the first two fountains in Kamyak and this is how uh, Kamyak Village started. Um, and this was actually the beginning. And then um, some Europeans, also me, joined, and uh, we um, started to make an official association to open doors to get funding and also job possibilities and perspectives. Um, and since then, we are building houses, echo domes, animal houses, tree box, and water towers. Uh, we bring solar energy in this area. Um, this yeah um we taking 100 workshops also with jay uh, about the tree box but also with farming and uh, different kind of um workshops and also we were uh giving workshops now to the villagers around to um to bring all of us together and work together and of course in our team we come together and discuss and um yeah work together and bring things further uh, we created in Kamyak Village a uh, soap business with 12 women around um, to produce with uh, local, like in our, um, with herb in our area, um, organic soap. And we are also creating Cafe Tuba, which is a Senegalese uh, coffee with a lot of herbs. Um, we are building a, yeah, a sewing company uh, in, in um, Kamiak called Jiko, the brand name is Jiko, and uh, selling the clothes in Dakar. Um, we are creating uh, exchange possibilities um, to bring international people into Kamiak, or like to Kamiak, to exchange, to discuss about uh, different topics and build up an ecotourism. Uh, we were starting a Korean natural farming system. Um, we have 500 chicken and producing uh, organic eggs. And we are making a woman uh, community garden, which is uh, one hectare big, and where we can use the compost of the chicken there. And of course, we are building uh, a water, um, no, rainwater harvesting system with Jay, the tree box. Uh, we are building three, um, three tree box. Uh, one is in, in the two in our, in Kamiak, in our area. And then one is in, in the neighbor, uh, and in the neighborhood. We were building it there with them. And we were building a lot of, no, we were planting a lot of trees. Like I think 1000 trees, I don't know. It was like a lot. Every time when the raining, raining season starts, we are uh, planting more and more. Yeah, and now I would like to talk about uh, the tree box, how they are working in, in Senegal in Kamiak village. And first of all, um, we, I would like to talk about the acceptance of the tree box. Um, in the beginning, we were talking, um, Sahad and the group and all of us, uh, that we would like to add a compost toilet. And Saad Sar, he said, no, 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 it's not working with, with our culture. Um, because in Senegal, um, they use uh, water and not toilet paper. And also we didn't want to change their habits going to the toilet. Um, yeah, so uh, then I, I was talking with Jay and he came with the idea of tree box. And there it's actually perfect uh, for the culture in Senegal. Um, because also you don't have to touch any, um, the poo or the pee, it can just stay there. And the trees, they, they suck what they need and uh, the compost file is com decomposing very, very fast because the climate is super hot. Uh, it takes, I don't know, yeah, it's sometimes like 50 degrees, as I said. Um, 
our tree box in uh, our community is, are very accepted because they are very clean. It's a very pleasant smell. It doesn't stink at all. Um, and it's actually a very nice area. When I was living there, uh, I was I was I like to sit on the steps and smoke a cigarette and you know stay there because it's actually a nice place uh, to be there. It's not like a toilet. It's actually a wonderful place to to sit there. It doesn't stink, you know. It's it's cool. Um, the other thing is like uh, we have a tree walk uh, in in the other village, and there it didn't work very well in terms of um, in the beginning we were planting the trees. And because it's so hot, the, the, the trees, they need water. We were thinking maybe it takes three or four months and after it's enough uh, water that we use on the toilet, but it's not like this. It is like still now we have to water them, even they are so big once a week for sure, because the water, uh, the, the weather is so hot. Um, and the, the neighbors where we are planting the, also the, where we were building the tree block, um, they don't have a fountain in this in their property and um, yeah it takes for them two hours to go to a different fountain take the water and bring them um, to their tree book and water them and they and we have to see also the reality it's not their prior priority um, they don't have time every day two hours to just water the trees so uh, they take these two hours to go to the field and uh, to their field and um, yeah, make their, their farming. So um, it's actually, yes, it is important like to do it. And at the same time, we have to see the reality that um, we have to find solution to make it quite easily for them. Because yes, we can say yes, then they have trees with fruits and they can eat the fruits, but uh, it's also a privilege um, uh, yeah, standing um, where I'm saying, yes, we need trees. For them, it's like, yeah, because I, I have the basics, but if you don't have the basics, it's hard to say, okay, it's now important to actually water the tree. If you really like uh, think, yeah, I have to bring the water for, for my kids to, to, to um, give them water. So uh, we are now discussing with him an idea is, uh, to bring uh, closer to them a fountain so that they, had, that they have more easily access, access to the water. But this was actually a mistake of, of us. Uh, we didn't think of it. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't think that uh, it takes so long, still after two years, that the trees need a lot of water. Um, about the material, we have two tree box out of wood and one of metal, and we would definitely choose the one with metal again. Um, and I'll tell you why. Um, the wood is very expensive in Senegal. Um, the Chinese and Europe, European people, unfortunately, took a lot of uh, trees in Senegal, so there are not a lot of wood uh, accessible. And also the quality of the wood is quite poor, so it's not very strong. And we can already see in our tree book that um, the termites and the insects, they are going into the wood and it's a little bit not so stable anymore. So even though we were um, using wood vinegar, it's the quite, um, yeah, you can see it's not, not very strong. The metal one, um, it's, it's very good and we would choose the metal option here again for, for this climate. Um, the trees are growing very, very well. The trees are growing very, very well. Um, so we were planting trees uh, before the tree bug, one, one and a half years before. And to compare these trees, like um, the trees on the tree bug are way stronger and growing way better than the ones on the field. And um, so, yeah, I would really, really recommend to use such a compost system <clears throat> in yeah, in the continent of Africa. And maybe Saad, you want to talk about the future of tree box in Senegal? Yes, hello everybody, hi everybody. Yeah, my name is Saad, I'm gonna talk about a little, little bit of the future of tree box in Senegal. Because I think that is a really nice system, is a good system who is fitting with our social environment, with our social culture, because it's important Every time when we are trying to make a project somewhere, that to make the project with the social way of thinking of people who live there and the social way of going to toilets and, and to fit with their own 
habits. And for me, uh, with the experience of the crew bus that we have in our village, we are seeing that a lot of people, young boys, old women, men, they are all moving to the crew bus in our village for you know, when they want to go to the toilet. And I think that we, we should make, we should make a, a lot of teaching and to teach how people can build their, their own crew box and to and to spread it in I don't know in like a, around the villages and make it more more and and, and make more building process with wood or if, if if the wood is really expensive and find other way a cheaper way to make a lot of crew box in our village and around the villages around. Yes, I think that is a good idea in the future to yeah really to uh, to explore this field of of teaching, making art building, walking, teaching formation that people is, can know how to make their own toolbox and to let it uh, spread. It is what I have to say. Thank you.